Hello, like and subscribe or I will eat your food. What is your sugar mama story? I met a 30-year-old widow on Xbox when I was 19. She said she played Xbox to pass the time because she was financially set for life when her husband passed and wanted to make some Xbox friends. We start playing more and more until I couldn't keep up because my controller and headset broke. She asked for my address and after a week, I got a brand new controller and headset. I couldn't thank her enough and asked what I could do in return, to which she replied to just keep playing with her. Over the next few years, she occasionally buys me new games when they came out, and even a few collector's editions if I wanted them. Eventually, we drifted apart because I couldn't find time to play with my school and work schedule. I still miss her and occasionally try and find her online again, but can't remember her gamertag or Facebook. She will always be one of my best gaming buddies I've ever had. My mom, who works as a massage therapist, told me her boss who was 40 at her spa thought I, 19 at the time, was hot when my mom showed her pictures of me. Ended up getting an ad on Facebook from her, and she told me to come down to the downtown spa, where she worked at during her lunch break. Got an hour massage, we did the deed, she also gave me $50 and a chipotle burrito. In my early 20s I met an older woman around mid-40s in a bar. She was drinking alone and I stood by her to order a drink. She leaned over and gave me all kinds of compliments about my body. I said thanks and that she looked great too. She gave me her business realtor card and told me to text her around 2 am. I did. She rolled up to my place in a super nice Benz. Woke up and she was gone. Next weekend she texted me an address and to be there at 8 pm and to clear my entire weekend for her. I did. She had a really nice 8 bedroom house. She was wild, taught me a thing or two and let me explore all kinds of things I didn't even know I was interested in. The next weekend, same thing. I showed up and she had so much stuff for me. Really nice high-end clothes and shoes. She also bought all kinds of special toys for me to use with her too. We had a good time. Then she just disappeared. I don't regret it one bit. She was really nice and spoiled the heck out of me. She made me food and would bring it to me while I was in bed. Massaged my body dang near every day. Went out drinking with my cousin on a Thursday night and we ended up meeting a MILF at the bar he'd hooked up with before. It's closing time and he invites me over to her place to keep the party going. At the end of the night, she made me a bed in her guest room. I woke up the next morning with a terrible hangover and people are rushing around, and I'm like, what is all this noise? I emerge from the bedroom and sitting at the kitchen table is my cousin, the MILF and her two high school aged kids. Mind you, I'm 22 at the time and my cousin is 23. MILF packed us lunches while she made her kids lunches and sent us off with brown paper bags and Gatorades. The kids were less shocked than I was. I think they were used to it. Also she was divorced and lived in a massive house. I was seeing her for about two months. She was 10 years my senior. We worked together and there was always those certain looks throughout the year. She was going through a divorce and what previously bonded over depressive situations we were going through. It wasn't until I handed my resignation in and told the staff I was moving states did it kick off. She said we should go get a drink one night. Nothing happened. Then she invited me round to her place. Three awesome kids, anything I wanted. Food, great cook, meals and drinks out too. She was very in shape and we absolutely bonded very well in the living room too. It was almost perfect. Except for me having sneak out at the crack of dawn before the kids woke up. This continued for about seven weeks. I had my car packed and ready to go and we spent one last night together before I moved. We said our goodbyes and I drove off. That was the last I've heard from her. It could have worked out I felt. This happened to me a couple years ago. I was back home from college on a break and matched with this girl on Tinder. She seemed pretty cool and we texted for about three days, then decided to meet up and get some sushi. She came over to my house first and parked in front of my mom house for like 15 minutes and texted me she was too shy to come in. Eventually she walked up. We got sushi then went back to my place. One thing led to another and pretty soon we were doing the horizontal hokey pokey in my bedroom. She stayed the night and we hung out and got breakfast the next morning. She said she had to go to the mall to return some stuff and asked if I wanted to tag along. I said sure why not. We go to the mall and she's returning some clothes or something, so I'm just looking around the store. I find this sick Patagonia jacket and I was checking it out. When she was done, she saw me checking it out and asked if I wanted it. I said, heck yeah, but it's like 250 bucks. She said she'd buy it for me. I just laughed. She took it off the rack and went to the counter. I thought she was just really committed to the bit. Until she pulls out a manila folder freaking full of $100 bills. My jaw dropped and I probably made a weird sound. She just looked at me and winked. 
We left the mall and I had my dope jacket all bagged up. I asked her about the money and she just said, don't worry about it. We had been talking for a couple days and I knew a lot about her at this point and knew she worked a close to minimum wage job. I just let it go. She drives me back to my house and before I get out of the car, she says, hold on, and pulls out the folder. I ask what she's doing and she just throws $600 into my bag. I felt weird and tried to give it back. She said don't worry about it I have a bunch. She opened up her purse and pulled out like six or seven of these manila folders. Eventually she convinced me to keep the money and I was just like screw it. I'm a special worker now I guess. I go back to my school and she goes back to hers. Over the next few months she would randomly drop $500 in my Venmo every week. We continued texting and she just kept buying me stuff. If I mentioned being hungry, she'd order a pizza or something for me and my roommates. If I mentioned I wanted anything, I could expect to see it in an Amazon box on my porch a couple days late. It was awesome. I go back home again on my next break and decide we should meet up again. This time we skipped the sushi and went straight to doing the old bippity boppity boo. Again, things go great. She says the night and we watch a movie the next morning. She eventually decides it's time to leave and puts 10 $100 bills on my coffee table. At this point I know she won't take no for an answer, so I just take the loot and say thanks. She drives off and waves bye to me. Everything seemed normal. A few hours pass and I go to text her, but it doesn't go through. Weird but whatever. More time passes but my text still won't go through. I tried to message her on Snapchat, and it looks like she deleted me or blocked me or something. Turns out she blocked me on every form of social media. I was pretty confused. I just played it cool, and tried not be a weirdo and like call her a bunch or anything. Break ends and I go back to school again. Still haven't heard a word from this chick. Then at like 2am one night, I get a call from a blocked number. Shocker, it's her. I asked her what was going on, and she just shushed me. She was whispering but not like sexy whispering. She sounded super serious and a little scared even. She just told me that I can't tell anyone about our interaction together, her name, or anything. She even asked me to delete pictures she sent me of herself. I ask what the heck is going on and she just tells me she has to go. I hung up the phone and never heard from her again. Still got the Patagonia though. This happened in Tokyo around 5 or 6 years ago. Met a client at work when I was 26, she was 33. She was really cute, very smart and educated, and we got on very well together. She was a bit of a train geek, she liked riding trains. Fairly common in Japan but rare for a woman, she had a lot of cute quirks like that. She could tell you the make and model of every pantograph on every train in operation in Japan. Anyone who knows Japanese politics has heard her name before. I didn't know who she was when we first met, but my boss later on told me to treat her like a VIP at all times. Anyway our work project wrapped up and we decided to go out for a bite at a nearby restaurant. She tells me she needs help preparing for an interview at a very famous company, for a very unique role that they would essentially be creating just for her. I tell her I'd be happy to help her with it. I didn't have any ulterior motives. I genuinely liked her and wanted her to succeed. We met up again to do the interview prep and one more final practice after that. She invited me to play darts with her after we'd finished, since she apparently enjoyed darts and I'd never played before. We went out to a darts bar in the early evening, and somehow we ended up playing a game where the loser of the game had to drink tequila shots. She mopped the floor with me, but we both started doing shots until well past the last train's home. Eventually we wound up going to an internet cafe to spend the rest of the night, but things progressed pretty quickly. She got touchy-feely, and we decided to get out of there and go to a hotel together, and so began our relationship. She turned out to be super rich. She would buy all kinds of stuff for me, would never let me pay for dates, even though I was making very good money for my age, wanted to take me on all kinds of trips around Asia. She bought me some very nice watches and clothes, which I still have and cherish to this day. She had a Benson and a Ston Martin, and some other cars just lying around in her parking spaces in the middle of Tokyo. Probably would have married her if it weren't for some complications with her marital status. I found out about that, after a few weeks of dating. It was a bit of a tragedy really. It turned out she was in a terrible, loveless marriage and had a young child. I found out about that way after we'd already been going out a while. At first it made me uncomfortable to be in that situation, but I started to understand that she was trapped in it, and due to societal pressure she had no real way of divorcing. Neither of them wanted to continue their marriage and both of them were seeing other people, but due to their very high profile in the Japanese media, a divorce was out of the question. We ended up breaking up when we realized having a kid together would cause irreversible damage to her political career 
and that a divorce to marry a white guy would be the end for her professionally. That really sucked but it was the truth. She was the best girlfriend I've ever had. My friend earns really good money and works for a government organization in a poor country, so she barely needs to spend anything. She's 33 and just likes younger guys, maybe around 21 to 25. She said it's because she enjoys the power aspect of it, and she doesn't mind paying them or spoiling them because for her, it's a power play. Works for her. Met her when I was 22. She worked two shifts a week at work and suggested going to a movie. I was flattered and jumped at the chance. Afterwards we went to her apartment and had the most awesome bobbity boo of my young life. Next day, more of the same. Within a week, she suggested I move some of my stuff in. No need to pay rent. Her mom and dad took care of that and the car payments, and credit card bills. Eventually I found out her family owned thousands of acres of farmland, three radio stations, and a television station. After a few weeks, the Bobbity boo got less and less, and she began spending more time out with her girlfriends. Guys would come by too, guys wearing colors and riding Harleys. Slowly the truth started coming out, she was a lesbian, the women were her rich girlfriends, the bikers were her drug dealers. She needed a man to live with her, to keep her rich extremely conservative family from guessing that she liked women, and cutting her off from her money. Feeling like I'd been lied to and gaslighted, I moved out after a month and ghosted her. I've been working at a restaurant for over a year and a half now, and the same elderly couple comes in at least three times per week. They're both probably in their 70s at least. The woman is always in nice fur coats and has different jewelry all the time, but is kind of losing herself to her age. I don't think she has dementia quite yet, but she's not quite all there anymore. The man is constantly leading her around, walking her to their regular booth, helping her order, etc. Found out recently the poor old guy lives in his car. Basically this woman pays for him to have a few meals with her each week in exchange for his companionship. It's kind of like a weird elderly escort deal they've got going on. It's sad, but in a weird way kind of sweet, as I've noticed he gets very protective over her, and seems to genuinely care for her. He keeps all of her receipts for her, makes sure she gets exactly what she wants, and always makes sure she gets her 1.5 scoops of vanilla ice cream for dessert. How the guy survives living mostly in his car in Minnesota winters is probably solely due to help from this woman. When I was 19 I dated a 35-year-old lady. She was not super rich herself, but her dad was and she was very much a daddy's girl. Anyway her dad was a realtor who made a ton of money by war profiteering. Anyway, he kept up with his rich clients and sold them vacation mansions in the states later on. Rich folk have such money to waste. He then paid his daughter, my girlfriend, 800 bucks a month to check in on the client's mansions once a month, or so to make sure the mansion hadn't burned down or something. Keep in mind his clients lived in Dubai and never came to their vacation home in the States a single time in 20 plus years, despite spending all of the money to get them furnished and everything. So me and my girlfriend would go to the mansion and just sleep in the mansion for a while sometimes. I've known other well-off people, but to this day I have not set foot in another home as huge as that freaking mansion. Their master bathroom had a separate room where the entire ceiling would shower water. Fifty people could all shower at the same time in there. I got to shower in there by myself on several occasions. I don't have a specific story but this was my father apparently when he was young. My grandmother told me how he would always go out with women twice his age. It was such a regular thing I guess, that after dates she'd just go so how old is she this time? Many many years later and after my mother's passing he's still doing it. He's in his 50s and his lower limit is the 70s. And he ain't messing with no broke to broke either. My colleague reconnected with someone from college and ended up marrying her mother. They've been together for years. My other colleague has been seeing an older woman who's separated from her husband. She buys him nice things sometimes, but mostly pays for his bus tickets to go see her for the weekend. He's holidayed with her for the past three years and gets on well with her daughter and granddaughter. He's mid-twenties and she's sixty. The joke started as soon as we found this out and stopped about eight minutes later when literally none of it fazed him. We're all happy for him. When I was twenty I had a stint where I was unemployed. To start getting benefits I had to attend a job agency. Saw my agency contact at the local nightclub one weekend. Hooked up, took her home to my house. Next meeting she used agency money to buy me a new suit. Two shirts, two ties and about $600 in fuel cards. Basically a one night stand turned pretty profitable. She was also 18 years my senior. Went on a date with a 36 year old woman visiting from New York. Didn't see the point as I was looking for a relationship. Had a good time, wasn't doing well at the time, so she flew me out to New York and paid for everything. 
She flew back a few times, became clear she was emotionally unbalanced. Sweet girl and I wish her the best. The last number of your like is who powers you get, comment who you got. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe for more.